Pray prophetically. Praying prophetically is when you pray about things that you know are right and things that need to come to pass and things that are in the will of God. And, and even though you may not see it for a long, long time, you still pray about it. Hallelujah. Yeah. I like for things to happen right now. <laughs> I don't like the way we're I, I, I'm like a man I know who said... I was born without patience and had a relapse. That is me. I'm not good at being patient. Not at red lights. Not at ATMs. Not online. Nowhere. I'm just not a patient person. But sometimes you have to wait on the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Can somebody say amen? Yes, yes, yes. They, that, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. See, it, just wait a while. God will come through. Yes, He will. Us. Yes, He will. Sometimes you go through life and you wonder if you're doing anything for God at all. I'm just living out in the country. Nothing ever really happens out here. I'm not a great influencer. I never have really done anything big for God. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a missionary. I've never been overseas. I, you know, you want to do something for God, but it just seems like it's never going to happen. And now most of my life is just flash by like a lightning streak. And now I'm at this point in life and probably never will do anything for God. Doesn't seem like. Let me read you a story. This is uh, written by Libby Ivy. It's dealing with women in particular. It can apply to anybody's situation. And, and how women are used by God to change history. This was published March of 24th of last year. Historically, God has used women to change history in positive ways. In the Bible are many examples of this. Women such as Deborah, Abigail, and Esther. And two special women in our time, and this is talking about our lifetimes, were used by God to change history. Their names were Hannah and Golda. Both were pivotal characters in modern history of Israel. Now you know about Israel. You've got an Israeli flag right here in the front of the sanctuary. We believe that God's Jewish people are God's chosen people. We believe God has a special place in His heart for these people. We believe Israel is a place that is blessed by God. That's where Jesus walked this earth. Many prophecies dealt with Israel. And, and, and you pray for Israel. By, I, I know that by virtue of the flag being here. Hannah was a Quaker and a devout Christian. She was a mother of four children, but sadly lost two of them to death. Even so, her faith in God never wavered. When her son Richard was a boy, she told him that one day he would be in a powerful position. She said Israel and the Jewish people would need his help one day, and when that time came, to do all he could to help him. This was a little boy by the name of Richard with a mama just saying, one day you're going to have be in a position that you can help the Jewish people. When that day comes, do everything you can. Wow. Seems like an odd thing to tell a little boy. The other woman, Golda Meir, was a Jew and became the prime minister of Israel. Some of you may remember her. How was it that these two women, Hannah and Golda, from different parts of the world would be used of God to change history? What is known as the Yom Kippur War of 1973 brought the influence of both of these women to bear on Richard M. Nixon, then President of the United States of America. That was that little boy, Richard Nixon. At 3 a.m. that October morning of Yom Kippur in 1973, President Nixon received a phone call from Prime Minister Golda Meir asking for America's help. Three o'clock in the morning at the White House. Taking advantage of Israel's vulnerability on that holy day of worship, the annual 
Jewish Day of Atonement, Arabs attacked Israel. The Arabs, the Egypt from the south and Syria from the north, had them hemmed in in this little country, and there was nowhere to go, seemingly nowhere to turn. And all of this was backed by the Soviet Union. They led a surprise attack on Israel, and it looked like it was all over. There were so many Israelis wounded and killed that General Mashi Dayan, Israel's highly respected military leader, entertained thoughts of surrender. It looked like in that darkest of nights, it was all over. However, Golda Meir refused to surrender and instead made an urgent call to President Nixon for America's help. That phone call brought to President Nixon's mind what his mother had told him as a little boy. Praise God. Moved by Golda's call and by his deceased mother's words, Nixon ordered Israel's military needs to be supplied immediately. That enabled Israel to defeat their aggressors in what became known as the Seven Day War. Mm -hmm. And they took over much of Egypt. Yeah. They turned the enemy back. What an amazing thing it is that Hannah Milhouse Nixon and Golda Meir, two women who never knew each other, were used by God to influence President Nixon to help Israel in a time of great need. Who knows some of the things that you have said along the way already. One day, God is going to use that thing that you said and turn it into something great. Hallelujah. You had some influence on somebody perhaps already in your life that one day it will amaze you. If you've ever studied the history of Billy Graham and how he got saved and traced that back through a couple of men that just seemed like they were just a little country preacher preaching to a handful of people that had no influence over anybody, but that turned into a Billy Graham right, just a little yeah. ways down the That's line. That's right. God can wow. use what you are doing for great influence in this world today. Things that you are saying today can make a great difference on a future day. Things that you're doing today can make a great difference on a future day. Things that you are praying today can make yes. a great difference on a future day. God wants you to pray prophetically. Ezekiel had a vision in Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 4 and it says again he said unto me prophesy upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. In Acts 2, 17 and 18, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass in the last day. We've already established we are in the last day, saith God. I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Good. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, yeah. speak the word of God, speak Hallelujah. The in harmony with God. Right. God. Your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. See, whether you're young or whether you're old, whether you're awake or whether you're asleep, God can use you to have visions and dream dreams and to prophesy. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Yes. You need to be praying yes. prophetically during these times. Hallelujah. 